Um, let's move on to Joel's question. It's a little spicy. Got another spicy one. It says, is it okay to decrease my investing if I'm projected to reach my goal? I got my master's, got the promotion, guaranteeing my pension, and my money is in a good spot. Is it time for YOLO? Man, what do you think? So I, you know, I've got some dear friends of mine, Brian. And they're very, uh, very high income. Uh, and they're really good savers. And, and what they did is they said, hey, you know, Bo, we figured this out. You know, we were really aggressive in our 20s. And we saved a lot of money. And I understand how time value of money works. I understand how compound interest works. And we figured out that, like, based on what we saved, if we can just save, I'm going to make up, but if we can just save 5% of our money from now until we get to 65 then we're going to have a gazillion dollars or we're going to be completely financially independent. So I just don't think we need to be saving that much. I don't think it's something we should focus on. I feel like that's what Joel is saying right here. Hey, can I decrease my investing? Because I've put together a projection that says that things are going to be all right. Well, Brian, do projections of what we think are going to happen, especially for younger folks, like I'm thinking like 24-year-old Brian, projecting what 50-year-old Brian was going to look like. Do things always go the exact way that we think they're going to go? And is that something we could bank our financial future on? No, I, I, I think I see your point is that, there, and there's been some famous fire people who have had to go back to work because what they retired in their late 30s, sometimes even early 40s. And then once kids came on the scene, it completely blew up a lot of the projections. I, I do agree that you need to be careful thinking your moment in time is going to be static forever. Um, But I do also want to give a little grace in the fact that I've had a lot of comments come through and people reach out through social media platforms where they're living the miser lifestyle, Mm. um, where they are maybe in their 40s and they're they're starting to, to, you know, they have really built, they've made all the sacrifices in their 20s and 30s and they built up a nice basket underneath them. And they even maybe have gone to learn.moneyguy.com and looked at the Know Your Number course you're like, well, gosh, I have reached my, my goals. If you're a person who's lived so lean that you, that you feel like, man, I have family cussing while we don't do better vacations or while we're, you know, doing everything so cheap uh, mm-hmm. on everything, then I do want to encourage people, use the resources we talk about to kind of take a measure of where you are with things. But I worry about with somebody like Joel who just says, I've done some, some analysis and I'm okay just doing, if I start you know, pulling back and going yellow, just don't blow up your living expenses to where you now can't live off of what you, know, what you think you could, what you projected. Because as we often get told by you, you listeners, is that it's not your income that matters in retirement, it's the expenses. Mm-hmm. But you, what you have to be very careful of is, and I've, I've dealt with some very successful people who have incredible incomes, but then you find out what they're spending. You're like, what in the world? I mean, how are you spending this much money with this level of income? Is that you can get, a, you know, because it, it's all about, we live in a consumption society. Mm-hmm. There are plenty of people. You don't have to be playing Brewster's Millions. There are plenty of ways for you to blow through whatever your level of income is. So I just need you to have that voice in the back of your head is that, What's the why? What's the plan? Have I actually done all the measurements to make sure that when I am going to go live my better life? Because that's what 25% is supposed to be a liberation thing. Mm -hmm. Because once you've done the 25%, you can actually now live life on your terms. And that's why I like step eight of prepaid expenses or abundance goals. If you want to, you know, start, you know, saving for the kids or driving the fancier car or start getting into rental real estate and all these other things or buy the vacation property. That's what that 25% is supposed to liberate you from. But I don't know without knowing more of your details, Joel, just be careful. Be very cautious of just saying, you know what, I think I'm going to cut down on all of my my saving and investing because I I think I've done enough. Maybe you have, but just that's something you need to measure twice, cut once on because I don't want your consumption to get to a point that, that, that what you thought was safety actually turns out to be a trap in the long term. And life kind of comes at your heart. I mean, Brian, you and I have had to make financial decisions uh, in, in, in the past couple of years. I said, man, if our 25-year-old versions of ourselves knew that these were the decisions we made, like it, what we thought the future was going to look like back then versus what the present day looks like, it's just very, very different. I think that happens to a lot of us, especially, Joel, if you are younger and your kids 
aren't grown or maybe you don't have kids yet or maybe you know you don't have all that stuff figured out i just know that the expenses what i thought i would have needed to retire when i was 25 years old versus what would be necessary to retire today versus what will probably be necessary to retire 25 years from now it just shifts and it changes and i think that's something you should be realistic on the good news about 25 percent is it will allow you to move with those changes yeah. which i think is a beautiful beautiful thing